Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Megan and Todd Talk D&D. And today we have more information about the Magic Missile. Uh, we have another uh, video about the Magic Missile. So if you've not already seen that, it would be great if you can go back and give that a watch. And Todd, did you want to tell us a little bit about concentration spells and magic missile yeah that's right so magic missile on top of the you know the previous video we did about you know you roll only one 1d4 to determine the damage for every magic missile and then the evocation wizard adds their intelligence modifier at some point you know with empowered evocation they can um, basically do a ton of damage that can't be saved for uh, very it's a very weird spell magic missile but the other thing that's interesting is concentration when it comes to Magic Missile, because Magic Missile doesn't miss. Mm -hmm. uh, the rules for concentration spells are very specific in that if you take damage and you're concentrating on a concentration spell, you have to make a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. And that constitution saving throw is uh, equal to half the damage you took, or it's 10, whichever is higher. This is a really big deal because Magic Missile probably isn't going to, you know, <laughs> it's you being halved, it's just going to be a 10. But if you are hit by, you know, at first level, it's at least three darts. If then you upcast it, maybe it's four, five, six, seven darts, mm -hmm. and you cast Magic Missile against an enemy caster who is trying their best to concentrate... The odds of them losing their concentration become higher and higher and higher. Hey. Hey, hey, what are you yeah. doing? What are you doing? What are you... What are... You're really being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> you're really just being this jerk that you're If like, you're throwing five boo, to six boo, boo, boo. different darts at them, you're eventually going to break their concentration. Yeah, and it's, this is really nasty. This is nasty stuff uh, for a spell that cannot be saved against. Now, obviously, you can use shield, which is a reaction, mm -hmm. to block it, but that is a wizard's spell. To understand how important this is, in D&D, you can only concentrate on one concentration spell at a time. There are over 230 concentration spells in D&D. Now, wizards do get the bulk of those, but wizards have the most spells. So not everything they're going, going to be casting is a concentration spell. Mm -hmm. Druids, however, have All so... All of the concentration. Oh, uh, Almost, they have so many spells that require concentration, mm -hmm. they don't have the spell shield, so casting magic missile on a druid uh, is just nasty. It's nasty stuff to do, <laughs> because it, they're going to break. They're going to break their concentration. Don't worry, Penelope, we'll never do that to you. <laughs> yeah. So, concentration uh, spells are typically spells that do damage over time, have s some type of duration, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's some exceptions to this, of course, like, you know, mage armor, mirror image, a bunch of other spells. But when it comes to summoning a monster, right? Uh, Dance Macabre. Uh, it, it, a lot of control spells, right? You know, things, things that alter the environment for a set amount of time. Uh, you know, uh, call lightning. All these are concentration spells. And to be able to use a first level spell to shut that down is really powerful. Uh, and not every spellcaster really has the highest constitution. If you're, mm -hmm. you have to make a concentration check, it's, it's really a constitution saving throw that you have to make. Yeah. And, you know, wizards, not famous for being healthy all the time. <laughs> it depends on how you want to roll that character, but, but Magic Missile becomes very effective in these situations mm -hmm. very rapidly, on top of being just damage that they take autom automatically. So mm -hmm. I think it's really nasty against Druids. Clerics have some concentration spells as well, but uh, against your fellow casters, it's, it's, it's pretty rough. And consequently, if you're playing a wizard, I think you should always have Magic Missile ready. I Absolutely. think you should always have Shield ready to counter Magic Missile. Mm -hmm. Magic Missile is just a, a weird, one of the weirdest spells in D&D. It even harkens back to like Chainmail before D&D even existed when they, because they referenced different types of attacks, including missiles. Mm -hmm. The Magic Missile actually weirdly has not changed much. Perhaps Magic Missile is overpowered. Uh, no, but, no it's not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that makes sense because Fireball and Lightning Bolt are specifically designed 
partially to be overpowered on purpose because they are part of the identity of D&D. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not against it, but Magic Missile is so weird. Yeah. For uh, all the benefits. It, again, it's just a really good tool to have in your toolbox, especially if you are starting at a low level. It's good to understand what kind of spells or cantrips that you can use that can give you an advantage. Uh, this is definitely uh, an essential spell if you are going to be playing a wizard. Real quick, how, how, do, how does your character like to flavor Magic Missile, though? Yeah, so I would normally load my darts into my blunderbuss, and each dart would shoot individually through the barrels of the blunderbuss. Um, maybe they're green, they emit a green streak as they are headed towards my target, but yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. There's a weird scene in Fifth Element uh, where... <laughs> <laughs> Gary Oldman uh, is shooting a gun and he scares all of these the, the, these aliens that he's trying to sell these weapons to. And he shoots at them, but all the darts automatically hit their target, all the, all the ammunition, mm -hmm. once they shoot that first round. And so I always imagine a caster like turning their back on the enemy and shooting magic missile and just having it spray around them. Like oh, shoot yeah. out and then all the way behind them as like a flourish. So it's kind of like a homing missile? Yeah. I mean, they're exactly homing missiles, mm -hmm. so why not make them look like homing missiles and have them go Ooh. directions that they really maybe, shouldn't go? Well, maybe I'll try that. I've kind yeah. of been thinking of doing a Yondu flavor. Yeah. You know, his little needle where a you whistle more, and then, yeah. Yeah, a lot more just, Yondu. <laughs> every, every dart behind that first one just kind of follows its path. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us for another episode of Megan and Todd Talk D&D. Todd, do you have any announcements that you'd like to make? No, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon as well. That's what makes all these videos uh, possible. Thank you mm -hmm. for, once again, revisiting Magic Missile with us again. Uh, it is a very versatile spell uh, that can be quite nasty if used appropriately. So uh, thank you so much, Megan Kenrick, for uh, not only being my wife, but also being in these videos with me. Of course. <laughs> I, lo I love doing these with you. I, I love uh, talking about D&D &D with you and picking your brain. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.